Now, I'm going to let you know the one thing that has made a huge difference for us that I purchased before our last cruise. I love it. I'm going to let you know what it is. So stick around till the end. Hi, I'm Ilana from Lifewall Cruise, and today I'm going to be going through 21 cruise packing tips that will be able to help you to get ready for your cruise. Now, I'm a cruise industry expert. I've been working in the field for over a decade. I've also been on over 20 cruises myself, and I have the website and blog, Lifewell Cruise, that helps over 25,000 readers a month get ready for their cruise with my cruise tips. Now, let's get into those packing tips. Packing tip number one. The most important thing that you'll need to bring on your cruise is your passport or your government ID. So what you'll need to board the ship. Um, something very important when you get ready for your cruise is make sure that your passports are up to date. Most of the time they need to be valid for at least six months after the date of your cruise. So do verify that. When you board the ship, you're going to need your cruise documents and your passport. Um, when it comes to your passport, something I suggest all the time is do make sure that you do not put your passport into your suitcase. Instead, keep your passport right on you. I like to keep mine in my purse. I even keep my family's with me as well, just to make it easier. If your passport happens to go into your luggage and gets put on the ship, that could be a very big problem and could actually risk that you don't make it on the ship at all. So the most important thing, passports on you. Packing tip number two. You wanna bring a carry-on onto your cruise ship for the first day of your cruise. Now that is because it's gonna take a few hours until your luggage is delivered to your cabin. So you'll want your um, backpack or maybe a beach bag or a carry-on. You'll wanna have that basically to have all the basics that you'll need for that first day of your cruise so that you can enjoy it. Now, if we're doing a Caribbean cruise, oftentimes what we'll wanna do is we'll wanna keep our bathing suits and our flip-flops and our cover-ups, things like that. Other things to put in your carry-on include any valuables. So if you're bringing jewelry on the cruise, definitely keep that uh, in your carry-on. And tech items, so laptops, iPads, those sort of things, make sure that those are all in your backpack and anything that you would need for that first day. Packing tip number three. So the third thing that you'll wanna bring on your cruise ship is a cell phone. Now, in the past, probably I would have told you um, maybe not to bring a cell phone, or maybe people are gonna caution you to make sure it's on airplane mode, and that's definitely something to be careful of, so do check that. However, now a cell phone has become something that's really probably something that's pretty either necessary or you're really gonna to wanna to have on the cruise ship. One, it's your camera and your, um, your video camera so you can capture the memories. Two, many cruise lines have an app on their cruise ships now where you can check the daily schedule, where you can sometimes book shows right on your phone through the app. There's a messenger service between passengers that you can use. Sometimes it's included, sometimes there's an extra fee. So do check with that, but it's a great thing to have. And the third reason is actually internet. Um, a few years ago, the internet on cruise ships was really uh, very poor and very expensive. Now, cruise lines are sort of moving along on this and the internet on ships is getting better and it's getting more affordable. So it is something now that you'll wanna look into the packages available to see if you do wanna buy an internet package for your cruise, um, you know, to check your emails back home, you know, go on social media, whatever you do want to do. Packing tip number four. Now something that you'll really wanna have on your cruise is a power bar. Now you do wanna make sure that this power bar is non-surge protected and is cruise approved. Now I'm gonna leave a link uh, down below to the blog post and, um, and to the item that I'm mentioning. But basically um, what we have to think about is the majority of cruise cabins have actually one or oftentimes two outlets, uh, electric outlets that you can plug things. And to be honest, with a combination of chargers and all the tech stuff that everybody has, it really just usually isn't enough. So it's really common for cruisers to purchase these um, little power bars. I suggest you find one with USPs. I'll leave um, the one that I like. I'll leave it in the link below. 
do make sure it's cruise approved. It does not have an extension wire. This is very important. Cruise tip number five. So it's cruise clothing. What to wear on a cruise. Now, I am not gonna tell you what you should wear on your cruise, but I do wanna give you a bit of an idea what to expect. So on a seven night cruise, most of the time, there are two out of the seven nights that are either formal or dressy or chic. And that just means that those nights are gonna be dressier than the other nights in the main dining room. This wouldn't apply to the buffet. So if you wanted to eat in the main dining room on those formal or chic nights, the dress code um, is sort of as follows. So usually what that would mean is a suit or dress pants for men, a dress shirt. For ladies, it would be um, a fancier dress, like a cocktail dress or a gown, or just something a little bit fancier. Uh, the other evenings are usually uh, smart casual or casual, and that just really means um, for men, maybe uh, a pair of khakis or clean jeans and a polo or a short sleeve, uh, nicer shirt. For ladies, capris and a little flowy top are fine. Um, sundresses, so what you would wear probably to go to a restaurant at home. Um, around the pool, bathing suits are perfect. Do remember that when you're heading inside, you'll want something to cover up. Most of the time during the day, you'll see people in really casual clothes on almost any cruise that you go on. So shorts, sundresses, um, you can really be quite comfortable being quite casual. Don't forget to bring comfortable shoes. This is really important. Now I have a question for you. Do you like to dress up? If the answer is yes, type yes in the comments below. If you don't really like it, let me know as well and type no in the comments below. Packing tip number six. Something I like to bring on my cruise is some downy wrinkle release and some tie to go. Now, when I unpack my clothes, oftentimes I just have those packing wrinkles. And so the downy wrinkle release honestly works really well. So I really like that. And in my case, I don't really like to do laundry on the cruise. Sometimes there's a small laundromat on board and you can do that. Um, otherwise there is um, a laundry service that you can send your clothing to if you wanna do that as well. But I like to bring a little tie to go stick with me and I find that super handy if I just get a little small stain, that's just been really helpful. If you do want, you could bring a little package of laundry detergent and you can wash a couple items right in your sink and then you can hang them, of course, um, in the bathroom on a little clothing line that you'll have right in your, um, right in your shower. Packing tip number seven, water shoes. Now, do you absolutely need water shoes? No, you don't absolutely need them. However, there are some cases where you will wanna have them depending on your itinerary. So for instance, if you're climbing Dens River waterfalls, you'll definitely wanna bring water shoes from home. Um, maybe you're going to one of the cruise lines, private beaches, and you've read that it has a little bit of a rocky shoreline, you also might wanna bring some water shoes. If you're going to the Mediterranean and maybe the beaches aren't sandy and instead they're a little bit rocky, those water shoes can be really handy. So that might be something depending on your itinerary that you'd like to bring on your cruise. Number eight, did you know that you can actually bring wine or champagne on the majority of cruise ships? Now do of course check with your cruise line. However, most uh, cruise ships that we've been on have allowed us to bring one bottle of wine Per person that is over 21 so it's been really great so sometimes you can bring champagne which is nice you can have that at sail away if you like or you can bring wine and you can have that on your balcony um, a little tip is um, if you'd like to drink wine and you are in your cabin and you've opened it there is you can actually just go to any of the bars and you can ask them for a couple of wine glasses and you could just bring them up to your cabin packing tip number nine you'll want to bring a travel corkscrew with you. So that's of course to open up your wine if that's your, what you're bringing. Now I do suggest you bring this from home, but I have a little tip for you. Something that we did a few years ago is we asked our cabin attendant if they had um, a wine uh, opener one of the times that we forgot to bring ours and that was on Royal Caribbean. So we got this little travel corkscrew, which I now bring with me. And then a couple of years ago, we were on a Norwegian cruise and our cabin attendant was super nice and he gave us a little travel corkscrew and it just makes a little nice souvenir and of course I do bring these with me now on my cruises. Number 10, 
Something that you'll probably want to bring with you on your cruise are some refillable water bottles. Now the water on cruise ships is actually safe to drink. So it's actually filtered. They've got a whole filtration plant right on board. So you can feel comfortable with that. And you can bring your water bottle from home. You could fill it up um, on the ship itself. And when you go out to shore excursions, you can bring your water bottle with you. Or of course, while you're sitting next to the pool, maybe you want a nice big bottle with you as well. So do bring some refillable water bottles with you. Number 11, you can also bring on some cruise lines, a case of water bottles. So if you don't wanna bring refillable water bottles or if you just like to have water bottles for when you go out on shore excursions, some cruise lines will actually allow you to bring an entire case of water bottles. So do check with your cruise line if that's the case. Um, if that is the case, what you do is you bring the whole case of water bottles to the cruise port and then one of the porters will simply slap a sticky luggage tag on it and they'll send it right up to your cruise cabin so it'll be delivered for you. Packing tip number 12, if you're going to a hot weather or a sunny destination, you'll want to make sure that you have protection from the sun. So I always suggest you bring some sun protection, uh, like something with an SPF 30 is great, uh, something less if you want for later on during the week, but make sure that sun is so much hotter and brighter and reflects um, on the water than anywhere else. So definitely make sure you bring and wear sunscreen. Uh, if you get too much sun, which has happened to us before, then make sure you have some aloe vera. Bring that from home as well. It's going to be much more expensive on the ship. A little extra tip. We always bring some lip balm because just like our skin can burn, our lips can burn. So I always bring some lip balm and I even bring a few extra for everybody in the family. Packing tip number 13. So these are a few items that we bring from home, which I just think are really kind of helpful. So those items are Ziplocs. What we do with our Ziplocs is oftentimes I put my passports in the Ziplocs. If we have to get off the ship with our passports, I like that it's waterproof in the Ziploc. Uh, something else we bring are post-it notes. If we want to leave each other notes in the cabin, or we even want to leave a little note for our cabin attendant, then we have our post-it notes. Um, a little stapler, when you have the paper luggage tags that you print out and then you wanna put them on your luggage right before you get on the ship. So these are, this is pretty handy, the little stapler. And we also bring a highlighter. And basically what I do with the highlighter is that daily you're going to get the cruise planner in your cabin. And this is really just a schedule of things that are offered um, during the cruise. And so what I usually like to do is before going to bed or even in the morning time, I like to sort of highlight the things that we would like to try to plan on doing. And then this way I have that. So that might be something that you'd like to bring on your cruise. Packing tip number 14, bring a book. Now, I don't know if you're anything like me, but during the year, as much as I like to read, I really don't read as much as I would like. So I always remember to bring a book or two so that while I'm next to the pool or maybe before bed or maybe even sitting at one of the lounges during the day with a coffee that I have a book to read. So if you do like to read, something I suggest you do is make sure that you keep a book on the list. Packing tip number 15, it's your medications and your pharmaceutical products. Now this is one of the most important things that you can have on your packing list. So I actually suggest that you um, really even print this out and keep this handy. So something to think about is the everyday medications that you take, but also the medications that you might need that you don't take often, but that you might need just in case or once in a while. So make sure that you do put that on the list. Other items that are pharmaceutical products that you should think about bringing um, include um, band-aids, so basic first aid stuff. Your band-aids or your polysporin or your neosporin, um, your Tylenol, your Advil, um, cold medicine, because sometimes what can happen is you can get a cold or a little cough. We always bring some throat lozenges and little packages of hauls. Um, things for stomach ailments like, um, like Tums or Pepto-Bismol tablets as well as some Imodium and some Dulcolax, just for any stomach ailments might, that might come up during the cruise. Um, and something to keep in mind is while there will be some items available on the cruise ship, not all items are available. And when they are available, they're going to be significantly more expensive. So do make sure that you bring that from home. Packing tip number 16, 
it's seasickness medications or prevention. Now, I hope that you don't get seasick during your cruise. There's a good chance that you will not get seasick. Um, cruise lines nowadays have stabilizers and the majority of time, uh, you're really not gonna get seasick. However, it is possible to feel a little bit of the motion um, of the ocean during your cruise. So that can happen. So I always suggest being prepared. We even still, to this day, bring a little bit of something with us just in case. So some common items that are really helpful um, are C bands and basically these work with the pressure points on your wrist. I'm going to actually include links just below to a blog post as well as links to items because you can find these on Amazon and they're terrific. Um, motion sickness patches, they go right behind your ears and you'll see many cruisers actually use these. Um, something that we discovered a few years ago is actually uh, ginger tablets. Um, we actually just take with us a little bit of ginger candy and these really kind of help just for little mild, um, a little mild touch of queasiness that might come from a little bit of rough seas. So that's really handy as well. Um, you may wanna have some Dramamine with you or some Bonine or some Gravol. So uh, those are all items that are really commonly used uh, by cruisers uh, to prevent or to deal with seasickness on your cruise. So just make sure that you have items that you need and you know what happens if you're well prepared, chances are nothing is going to happen. If you're not well prepared, it is almost certain Murphy's law that you are going to need something. Packing tip number 17. You'll want to have some small dollar bills with you. So those could be ones, fives, tens, but basically those smaller denominations. And the reason you want to have those small bills with you is when you leave from your cruise port at the beginning of your cruise, you may want to tip the porters. Um, we often tip the porters when they take our luggage. Um, something else that you might want to do is when you get off the, um, the cruise ship at one of your cruise ports, there may be a straw market or a little market where you want to do a bit of shopping. And it's helpful to have those small bills, whether you want to do a little bit of bargaining. Um, and then of course as well, in the cruise ports, sometimes you're going to take an excursion. And if you are really happy with the excursion, or for whatever reason, you'd like to give a little extra tip to show your appreciation, it's helpful to have those small bills. Um, so I do suggest you bring them from home so that you're all prepared for your cruise. Packing tip number 18. Do you have babies or small children? Then you'll want to bring all of the items that you need for them. So maybe you need diapers and diaper cream and those sort of things. So all those basics. But something else that you might want to bring is some sand toys. So sand toys are great if you're going over to the beach. So bring those and bring some toys for on the ship as well. Something we used to do when our children were young is each of the kids would pack a small backpack with some of their uh, favorite toys and you know some playing cards and things like that. And oftentimes they'd meet kids on the cruise ship and they'd have a little something to play with or it'd be something for them to have just in their cabin. So don't forget to bring some things to keep your kids occupied and especially those sand toys. Packing tip number 19. Now something really helpful is to have a waterproof phone case lanyard. Now, um, oftentimes we're bringing our phones right to the beach or right to our excursions that are on a boat. So when you can get um, that phone case that is waterproof and keeps the sand out and you can keep your cruise card in it and maybe some money, that's just something really, really helpful. Those are available on Amazon. And again, I'll, um, I'll put the link below to the blog post as well as the product that I do recommend uh, and that's a lanyard with a waterproof phone case. Packing tip number 20, packing cubes. Now I'll be honest with you, these have just not worked out well for me. Um, I love the idea of them, however I am I think just too much of an overpacker at least for now, it's something I'm working on, uh, for them to be really that helpful for me. However, I do really know um, so many people that love these and I can see why. So for uh, a cruise ship, the cabins are so tight and the storage space is really minimal. So what I really like about the packing cubes is the fact that you can keep everything nice and organized. So a few shirts in one, shorts in the other, um, different people in the cabin in their own colors. So I love the idea that you can just unpack right from your suitcase and put those quickly away. And I think that that is a really a super handy organizational tip for a cruise. So if you think that that might be something handy for you, I do suggest that you get some packing cubes. Packing tip number 21. Now I told you I was gonna get to this and 
I am. And as I said, it really is something that is a small item, but it's something that has honestly made a really big difference for how we enjoy a cruise. Um, so I'm gonna show you what it is and then I'm gonna explain why we love it so much. So what we did is we bought these towel clips. So we bought some margarita glasses and we bought some flamingos right here. And basically the idea is that you have your towel um, on your pool deck and you can um, clip your towel uh, at the top of your chair with these uh, towel clips. And basically just to tell you a little bit about it, over the years, we happen to like sitting at the pool. So over the years, we'd sit at the pool and then when I'd be reading a book or having a drink, that towel would be flopping into my face or flopping onto my book. And I didn't really realize what a bit of a nuisance that was, but we were just used to it. That's what we had. And I always saw people with these super cute clips. And over the years, I've seen more and more. And I have a thing for flamingos. So I just love them. They make me happy. So finally, for the last cruise, we decided to buy them life-changing. Um, these are so cruise worthy that they just make me really happy. So I do suggest that whether you buy these flamingos or whether you buy simple ones, they are practical, they are handy. You could bring them with you uh, when you go off to shore and you're on a beach. Um, they are so handy and so I do suggest that you get those towel clips. So we've gone through 21 cruise packing tips that I hope have been helpful for you as you get prepared for your cruise. Now, do you have any other items that we should be adding to this list? Let me know in the comments below. Now, if you like this video, please give it a like and consider subscribing to the channel and don't forget to hit that bell so that you can be notified when the next video comes out with some awesome cruise tips. Now, why don't you consider joining me over on Instagram or Facebook or at my blog, lifewellcruise.com. I'd love to connect with you. See you next time and happy cruising.